All right, guys, so let's discuss chapters 26 and 27. So chapter 26 was about Israel hand. And when we read a book, generally they're, especially an action book or an adventure, um, as we read, um, there's usually a climax in your story. And this is this, there's a rise in action as we read. And then it re reaches this like peak of the mountain climax of the story um, where there's a lot of really heavy action that happens, okay? Well, in Treasure Island, there's really kind of two instances where we really peak, but this one is the peak action of the novel in chapter 26. And this is when Jim goes man to man. He's, he's kind of thrown away his boyish ways and has had to really truly become a man very quickly and he goes man to man with a really bad guy israel hands and after discussing his his afterlife with jim hands sums up his devilish religion right he gets that kind of solemn attitude and almost in like a sarcastic manner he says well i tell you i never seen good come of goodness yet You've never seen anything good come of goodness, being a good and kind person. That's what he said, right? Him as strikes first is my fancy. So a person who strikes first, throws the first punch is what he likes best. Wow, he's really not a good guy, right? And then he says, dead men don't bite. So it's better to kill a person than to let them go free. And then he says, them's my views. Amen. So really he's being, it's a sarcastic prayer. Like Pew, that we read about in the beginning of the book, and Silver, Stevenson's other, so the writers, other personifications of evil, so where you're really taking a character and you're making them evil in a person form. Israel Hands is not physically intact, but still very dangerous, meaning he is physically hurt. He's not at 100%, but he's still very dangerous. He's wounded in the thigh right? But Jim says it was wonderful to see how fast he could move. So he's admiring, you know, this tenacity, this, this, um, how Israel hands is able to still move as quickly, even though he is really badly wounded. And then Jim ends up tricking hands. So hands thinks he's got a trick on Jim, but Jim ends up the one with the last say, and he tricks him. And telling him how to get the boat off of shore again once they have beached it. And then off preoccupies with the sailing maneuvers, Jim suddenly turns to see Hands approaching. Because remember, he spied on Hands, knows Hands' plan to try to kill him. However, he gets busy with the sail and kind of forgets about it. And then Hands takes after him. And then there's like a creaking noise and then he's able to get shimmy up the pole and get away from him. Um, all of Jim's practice in boyhood games, right? Where you, you dodge and dip, right? If you're playing like pretend fighting games as a, a child, he, this has come in handy for him and, and actually has helped save his life because he knows he's already played that game before. And this isn't a game, this is real life, but he knows how to dodge and duck. Fortunately for Jim, the Hispaniola hits the beach, and when it does, it kind of knocks him sideways, so they roll down. And it says that hands rolls down into the scuppers, where they become entangled with the dead body of O'Brien, so those holes kind of in the side of the boat where it let out the, the water. Jim springs into the shrouds while hands hauls himself up after him, clutching his bloodstained knife in his teeth. After hands is dark, so the knife misses him. Jim loads his pistols and mocks his enemy with his own motto saying, dead men don't bite, right? So Jim throws the words back into um, Hans' face. Jim, who describes himself at this point as being conceited as a rooster, right? Roosters are kind of cocky and they, they every morning will crow really loudly while he's saying he's being kind of conceited and cocky in that way. And it says that after cursing his luck and agreeing to give up the ship, Hands suddenly zings his dagger into Jim's shoulder and pins him to the mast. 
And actually the knife goes into Jim's shoulder and pins him up against the mat. Well, when Jim is in pain and he doesn't even really think about it or aim the guns and he ends up shooting Israel hands with not one but two guns and without a conscious aim. So he didn't even really think about it. And it says that hands falls into the water and they kind of comes back up and then he sinks forever to the bottom and dies. Now Jim is wounded, but he's feeling confident and proud, but and knows he's lucky, but he's also feeling disgusted with himself and he doesn't want to fall into the water with the dead body. And then he eventually kind of shudders and gets himself off the knife. And then we get to pieces of eight where this is in chapter 27 and Jim leaves the ship, his Hispaniola. It's beached on the sand until the tide comes up. He's gone back to the stockade, to the blockhouse. He thinks that it's his friends, even though when he approaches, he sees the fire that's like kind of weird. Why would his friends do that? But when he sneaks in, he thinks all his friends are snoring until he hears this like weird pecking noise. And then what happens, right? This is the bird, right? This is Silver's bird that's saying pieces of eight, pieces of eight, right? And he gives it away that Jim has walked in on them. And so then one runs out and they get the fire. They bring it in for a torch and they see that it's Jim. And then our chapter kind of stops there for this part of the book. So we don't know what's about to happen. Are they going to try to kill Jim? What are they going to do with him? He just snuck in on them while they were sleeping, right? So that's where we will get tomorrow. So we're going to leave off there. Okay. And I'll see you tomorrow.